And we're live. Oh, we're live. Welcome back to Four Peas in a Pod. Um, our guest today has just turned up very late, come in demanding coffee, and has been very underwhelming. To our sponsors, the, the soundboard the company. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, shall I introduce our guest? Uh, today we have the man that we've been talking about for weeks. Uh, he had a glowing report from Emmanuel a week ago that I think you heard. Um, I'm glad to say that he's much more relaxed. He's in Crocs and and he's in uh, off-season off mode. Off-season, off-season togging. Um, and we're going to have a little chat about a couple of things, but we're going to have a chat about his coaching philosophy. Um, it's a pleasure to welcome the hardest working man in the world, in the world. <laughs> Mr. Tom. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm loving the sandwich. New level. No, what do you mean, sample? That's just the audience. That's yeah. the audience. I'm sorry, we're, I'm not live, we're live. We're live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing this one live today. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Coffee's great. Lovely night's sleep. Apologies for the slight lateness. Would you accept that off any of your basketball? No, I wouldn't. What would be the fine? Yeah, what? They would probably run suicide. So oh, yeah, we'll get that yeah, done. We'll get, get, that done. Get, get your Crocs in sport mode. <laughs> <laughs> and you're off. <laughs> I want to know about your previous pod experience. Didn't yeah, you? I did some stuff in lockdown. I was quite fortunate, really. In lockdown, we were kind of part of a few coaching networks. Just a bit of an opportunity. Obviously, none of us were, were, were really coaching at that time because we couldn't. So I think for coaches, it was a bit of an opportunity to, to try and spend as much time networking as possible, really, um, and trying to learn from each other. So jumped on a few of those networks, learned, learned a hell of a lot. I've a lot of really, really great coaches. and then Yeah, no, it was a great experience. Good experience. Um, but I think there's a lot of value in getting involved in those networks. Just like getting involved in this network. This network this, as well, this, yeah. Uh, Ple- absolute pleasure to be on this podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's getting traction now, no, though, isn't really it? Not. It's getting traction. Now, Miss Lewis is mentioning assemblies. Yeah, yeah Miss Lewis right. mentioned assemblies. We've had, we've had your friend outside of, outside of school. Yeah, yeah. other schools are looking to, uh, schools. to you know, copy. We need to pattern. We need to pattern this earlier. Yeah, yeah. 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 or pattern podcast. Yeah, no, no, just just this, just something. Um, amazing stuff. Well, I've written down some questions. Um, although I don't want this to seem scripted at all. We're back to the script this week. We're back to script this week. We've binned <laughs> off no script, and we're back to script. So, um, where do you reckon your love for coaching started? Out oh, because you did use to play, didn't you? Where did you love yeah, the coaching did. start? Um, I played at academy level and then I think very early on I realised and I'm quite open about this but very early on I realised that I was pretty obsessed with the game and I wanted to do something as a career within basketball so obviously I was fairly decent but I was I was knew I wasn't going to be good enough to, to, to have a pro career in basketball and, and to go that far with it so did you did you prefer coaching to playing? Or was you still playing at the time when you sort of started getting I was into still it? playing when I started coaching, but I think quickly, coaching quickly overtook it. I mean, I still miss playing now. I was, you know, I'll still jump in from time to time with a two and two or a three and three with the boys, or we'll play a charity game at Christmas, and yeah. I absolutely love it. You didn't do too so. well in that charity game, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Powell, how'd you do in that charity game? Got a layup? Yeah, oh yeah. What about you, Mr. Stanley? No, zero layups. Good. <laughs> how many points you score, Mr. Tom? Uh, a couple, yeah. yeah. Just a couple? Just a couple what, same as Mr. Patworth? Points. I think it was six in the end. Oh, six, right. Right. So for those of you who don't know, that's two 12. more layups than me. <laughs> so I, du- I, I doubled your points, Tony. Yeah, you did. So you tell everybody, and you have been telling everybody. Since Christmas. Since Christmas. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to double that next Christmas. Oh, yeah. You wait. I yeah. can't wait. What's your coaching philosophy? That's such a broad oh, question. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, oh. We've only got half hour. Come on, just quickly. Just, just summarise yeah. your whole Try life's work. You've got 30, 30 seconds. seconds. I'll put it uh, I, I, Honestly, I don't, I don't think I can sum that up. But it's... it's. I'm kind of touched on it. I think for, coaching philosophy is one where I thought I knew it. I thought I was pretty clear on what my coaching philosophy was. And particularly when I, when I started doing my Masters, I realised that I didn't really have a clue what my coaching philosophy was. Because... 
what I think we're taught through coach education and, and, and those kinds of things is actually very much game-based models. And I don't think as coaches we, we think enough about the, the underpinning epistemology and the, the, the thought process behind just, it. Just, just for the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is epistemology? Sorry. The, the, um, so <laughs> just for the listeners. Yeah. Asking for a friend. <laughs> Thinking about it at a deeper level, thinking about thinking, thinking about the process that we go through rather than just, you know, oh, this is what I want to do on offense, this is what I want to do on defense, that's my philosophy, bang. It's a deeper level behind that. You know, how do I believe we build characters? <clears throat> what do I think practice structure should look like? How do I think learning mm-hmm. takes place? What are my views around that? So, um, to, to sum it up, because I know you, you want a little summary, um, I would say that I think. I consider myself to be very much a relationship-based coach. I, I think that's incredibly important um, that you have great relationships with your players. I think I come from very much a, a, a viewpoint where we need to be creative with the way that learning takes place and we need to think very carefully about practice structure and, and the way that we're using feedback. Um, to influence, I, I, I won't kind of go into the tactical side of things or the technical side of things because I think that uh, so varies a lot between coaches. But I think as a as a general philosophy, I think that I would I would say that I try to be very pragmatic. I don't think it's always a one size fits all type deal with our our coaching. Um, try to be very relationship based. I say try and all of these things. I don't think anyone's ever perfect, but I, I, I try to aim towards being creative, being pragmatic, and, and building great relationships with players. That's interesting. Is any of this resonating with you as, as our as our head of rugby? Do you want to put the soundboard on? So just so I know, yeah, no, how yeah. far, how long I've got to talk about rugby today? I know it'll, it's it'll come, don't you? <laughs> um, yeah, nice. I like it a lot. <laughs> I think, yeah, it does. And me and me and Mr. Tong speak quite, quite regularly about coaching as a whole um, and epistemology. And yeah, which we all now know what it means. Yeah, we're, we're always thinking about it. thinking. You know, it's any big word. I could have told you. I could have told you that. You know, it's thinking about thinking about thinking. Um, but yeah, it, I think it resonates with with everyone who's who's aspiring to be a a good coach. You you've got to have that idea in your head of which way you want to lead your coach, your program and what type of coach you want to be and are you more of a performance based or are, are we looking at relationships and are we looking at what comes next and I think especially at this level um, for, for myself and I think for Mr Tom as well it's what we can then get the boys ready for or, or our athletes sorry ready for next step they're here at the senior end for two years you know as, as, a, as a maximum competition and then it's what comes next we, we look at we look at Bucks rugby, you know, that's some of the some of the boys who are gonna to go to that is four four years and we wanna see them aspire to go on to do that and it's I think setting them up ready and on and the performance level, setting them up ready to be able to learn more, but it's also the the person, the character that, you know, they're able to apply all those different things in terms of student athlete, you know, being respectable, take being able to take criticisms and failure and how to deal with that and handle that and manage it and, and move on so it doesn't affect them. I think oh, should we should we all dive into this because we say a lot about with you're talking about the uh, the the approach to relationships and how how we deal with students and stuff like that. Should we talk a little bit more about what we define as a student athlete because we've sort of we haven't coined the term because it's been around for ages. But we like a GGS athlete. We've sort of started to use it a lot. But uh, it'd be interesting just to tell people what what we define that as. I think, for, for me, I think from from a rugby perspective, a student athlete is somebody who, you know, for me, from in terms of the program, is obviously committed to the, to their academics one hundred percent. You know, is going to their lessons, is studying hard, is doing everything they possibly can, but is then also giving up their time or managing their time around the around the program, coming to SNC, you know focusing when it's time to train, being prepared for training, but also giving back to the lower years. You know, we have a mass rugby in terms of year seven up to 10. Um, what I'd like to see, and we, we have touched it before, is that once they're away from that student side, uh, that they are giving back, and that becomes that whole student athlete approach. It's about being able to utilize 
all of your academic skills and apply that to all your sporting mm -hmm. skills and then being able to apply your sporting skills to your academic side of things and it just creates a better well-rounded individual well, all, all of the people that we've had on in the last four or five mm. pods that we've done I would say are all really good examples of our yeah, student athletes absolutely. mainly because of time management yeah. being able to fit in their sporting training matches S and C all around their all around their academics is got to be the biggest challenge. The amount of research that's been done on healthy body, healthy mind, the fact yeah. that by being physically active will help brain function is phenomenal. And I don't think in education, I don't think we put enough emphasis onto that. And there's so much being taken away from PE generally now. I'm talking on a national level. We're lucky here that we've got the support from the head teacher or, and the senior leadership group. But there's many other schools that PE is dying. <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And that will have a knock on effect on academic results yeah. eventually. We do it in year nine. There was a, there, there, there was a, a school in America who put mm. PE before subjects that children were struggling with. And the bloke did a TED talk on it, and then the, mm. the, 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 the impacts were dr like dramatic in terms of their English, math, and science they did it with just through the roof. And it was, and they, they, they also based it around sort of a fitness based curriculum and saw sort of just, just a massive improvement, which is. Just need, it needs to come from the top. The government needs to go back to understanding the importance of PE. I think, a big, I think a big part of becoming a student athlete is learning to become a little bit more diligent in what you're doing. You, you're balancing a lot. Um, you, you've got to think really carefully about it. But I think those, as Mr. Robinson said, it's, it's life skills. It's preparing you for, for what comes afterwards as in, in, in your adult life. So it's really important. Well, our sort of sixth formers are almost like training for sort of like a Bucks program, aren't they? In the way that study and play and how you balance it and early morning gym sessions and competitive sport around a university degree. It's almost sort of training them for that next level. Well, I think when we went to, to Cardiff and we <coughs> had that um, presentation from Danny, the, the Cardiff Met leader of the Cardiff Met program, it was you could see that some of the some of our boys were looking at that even some of the, the basketball boys as such even though it wasn't you know approach at them in terms of the sport it was the whole program you know these are essence this is the s and c times this is the video analysis this is your academic you know scheduling your lectures this is your your own free time to study where you're expected to be in the library and then you're you know catching up with physios or meeting for unit stuff and i think actually what we've got here as a as a full department and program it, it is replicating what's going on in, in yeah. bigger universities and it that's what we need that's what we but want i think see, the next step for us is mm. for students to be doing more of the analysis yeah. Yeah. more of the um, perhaps coaching and getting involved in w what they did at cardiff met mm. was have students running their analysis and doing their pre pre-game presentations and they're running it they're doing all the research yeah. ahead of they were playing Swansea weren't they yeah. in their first game of the season they had a, a big video on how Swansea are going to attack mm. um, and how you know Cardiff Met were going to um, were going to play against them and that was all created by the students and that's just like an extra layer of experience that they can take on to wherever they go next it's experience and it's like you get the most benefit out of the programme when sometimes students run it so I read Eddie Jones's book, and he said that their off day Mondays were always a problem because they the, the energy wasn't there. They, they they wouldn't get as much out of it. And he went away, and I think he spoke to a, a coach in the NFL, or the NBA, or something like that. And they put in this scheme that no, sorry, it was college basketball actually. They put in this scheme that the students or the the athletes were completely in charge of the Monday, and they 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 come up with their day, they come up with their meetings, they come up with their training schedule. And they completely took ownership of the day, and they found, and Eddie Jones said the same, they saw a massive increase in the productivity of the day because they felt ownership of it. Mm. Um, and I think that translates to what we're trying to do, but also in terms of outside of sport, they've got to go to work, they've got to work out when their meetings are, they've got to work out when they need to be somewhere, they've got to work out their emails, they've got to do all these things and balance these plates. And I think sport especially equips you for that. Not, you don't have to go into sport for the skills to be transferable. No, but also, if you're a student and you're in a sports team, just go and do it. Mm. And if you came with like a, a clips of 
something that you've seen in some film and you came to Coach Tom or to any of us and uh, or whoever your coach is and said, here's what I've found. No, we're not, no one's going to tell you off for it. No one's going to have a go and go, what are you doing? Well, It'll be, that's amazing. We, what, what else can we find? We might steer you in the right direction. But we go we out spoke, didn't we, at the Athlete Sport about how there's a, there's definitely a, a, a niche market there for a, for a PE teacher slash media mm. teacher mm. to link all that together. Mm. You know, whether that's, you know, your A-level <coughs> students are doing photography as, as, as Mr. Tong's had with, who is it that comes in and does your photography of games? Uh, yeah, James Piper comes yeah. in the next. Yeah, he's, um, he's obviously left now. He's his adult in the working world now. Yeah. But yeah, he's a, a guy that I've coached in the past. He yeah. comes back. We we if we had a media student doing that, running alongside their A level, um, you know, and then using that for a portfolio, we could that could become evidence, and then we move on. So mm. I think there is definitely something in there. I think you're quite big on having students involved because. We joke about you being here a lot. You are here a lot, but <laughs> a lot, a lot. A lot. <laughs> because you're training Half of this morning. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you weren't even on time for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're finished training at six or whenever you finish training. And leave it. You're then and yeah, you will because you'll you'll then let the boys shoot for half an hour. You'll then have a, a, a forty five minute discussion with someone about something. And, and, and like you'll constantly have those chats and those things, don't you? That that yeah. means that you can do things outside of training and get those. Yeah, I think yeah, promoting those little chats I think are really important with, with with players. Sometimes it's about the game directly, sometimes it's about wider things, but I think the more we can yeah, the more we can touch on those extra little bits. Um and just promote a little bit of thinking. Like like Mr. Stanley just said, is sometimes it's not always sometimes it's more about steering you in a direction and, and having you go into something really powerful about guys discovering things for themselves. But if we can, you know, we can have those conversations and steer and guide and promote you to go out and, and find the answers rather than giving you the answers all the time I think we do need to uh, do need to touch on a little bit I know you said you didn't want to talk too much about the team but we, we do need to explain that you've been here now what three years three years yeah. and in what was your what was your original goal five years time yeah to, to, and to, to, to go the original goal was five years to, to enter the, the academy league and, and to, to win a win a county title and obviously you, we did that this year well I'd say yeah even though you've been here three I'd say the first year the first year didn't yeah, count because they, they didn't, didn't play a game yeah, yeah. yeah you know they weren't you know people weren't here during that time were they they weren't here yeah. they would not know <laughs> they, they wouldn't know. know they wouldn't they know. Wouldn't know so I would say in two, in two years you've been you've you've achieved some great things here do you think, we, um, we, the do you, boys. We, 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 do you think yeah, we, set a precedent though? Because you could come in and without worrying about games you just fully set a, like a cultural mm, yeah, shift yeah someone Someone asked me that, and actually, I. Someone asked me the question, and well, they said to me, I think I bet it was really disappointing having to come in during COVID, and I said actually, I think it was a blessing mm. because. I I don't see when else you could come in and and launch a program without the pressure of immediate performance. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I think that can really. That does put pressure on 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 staff and on players and 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 everything because, you know, if you got guys that have never played basketball before and within a month you're expected to, to play and if things aren't going well and you're not necessarily winning games it can affect motivation and, and so I think the opportunity whilst yeah it was a, you know it was an incredibly challenging time and it was hard for everybody in many different ways but I think it was an opportunity for us to come in and to set a bit of a foundation and to explore things and start that long process but to start the process off without having to worry about games without having to worry about performance it, we, we almost had the first year to, to just practice um, and I think that that reflecting on that now I think that was almost a blessing I remember that sort of time where you were training for a whole year and then when the following September came round the feeling around basketball was everyone was really up like yeah. the game was what, I, can't, I can't remember what the first game was. Yeah, one by almost 80 points. And, but yeah. you guys were just, like, they, they were like <laughs> caged, caged animals that had, hadn't yeah. played for Absolutely. so long and the atmosphere, and it was and almost... 40 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And look, I need to... And it almost uh, kick-started the whole programme, I think, yeah. that sort of like... Yeah. And I, I, I do want to give credit, because hopefully, you know, some of the old boys will listen to these podcasts as well, and I think it's really easy now to give credit to the team that's just won a county yeah, title. Absolutely. And it's just entered the CBL, and it's really easy to give those guys all the credit. But 
let's not forget guys, the original group, you know, the guys that are at uni now, the guys like, you know, Ben, Kwame, Dan, David, all of you guys that, you know, they were training a whole year without playing a game yeah. and they were fully committed to the long haul, to the big picture. Absolutely. So year two, they could come back and play one season. Yeah. And I think that's that's a, a huge, huge... They I'm really, I'm lot. really sorry, Mr. Robinson. It's, 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 <laughs> it's the Prince of Soundboard. Yeah, it's the <laughs> Prince of Soundboard. Mr. Robinson's just. I hope this, is, how loud I hope this is good. Yeah, and it is. Sorry, I just to turn off his lesson. God. Sorry about that. Yeah, that, was, that was really no, good. That was just. <laughs> God. Sorry, I'm back. Back in the game. We, we, it was the same sort of thing, though. There were af- af- athletes ball. We were talking to some of the old boys from the rugby team, and they were going. Oh, I see the school's doing really well. I was like, well, you guys built it. Mm-hmm. You started it off. Like, yeah. you no, know, it's not happened overnight. It's happened over a course of years and exactly the same as what you're saying. Yeah. Just throughout your time, you've got to work out how you can add to things mm. and make sure you take things forward. Um, Keep the leadership in a better place. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Plant trees you never see. Yeah, 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 yeah I, like that one. I love, yeah, love that. that. Uh, I, I'm wary of time because we have got to come on to a couple of things because we have... We do need to talk about the Athletes Ball, because we, we haven't actually done a podcast since the Athletes Ball. Um, and I do want to give a quick update on cricket that is thriving at the moment. Oh, it is. Absolutely. Plugging, plugging. Well, you go oh, first, yeah. then. Cricket, you thrive, thrive about cricket, and then we'll end with the Athletes Ball. End with the Athletes Ball. I've, I've got one more question for you to talk about. Oh, go for it. Um, uh, I've got loads. Have you got a question? Yeah, I did, actually. Go on, then. So, just for the younger um, listeners that are uh, listening to the pod today, those aspiring to get into the first team in the future and um, in the next few years I expect the first team slots are going to be even more competitive than they currently are what though what are one or two or, or maybe three things that you're looking for from a from a player that you know will set them apart from the rest uh, okay yeah good good question um, commitment would be one of them um, but not just commitment to, to you know just practice but the like like mr. Patworth said the wider side of things you know when you start doing snc how committed are you to snc when you start looking at video how committed are you to video analysis you know when you turn up for practice what's your what are your practice habits how do you practice what sort of communicator are you are you an energy bringer or are you an energy sapper like what what are you bringing so the commitment side of it um is, is definitely one and, and another one i really like to see from the young guys is not just the commitment for you as an individual but how how much do you love the program coming into the senior end? Do you come and watch the seniors play? Are you somebody that, that joined? I mean, there's a couple of examples now of guys that are coming into year 11 next year and you know they'll be aspiring to then make that jump into first team, but they've been watching them play for two, three years. Like They've been there on the sidelines as a year eight, year nine kid, cheering them on and loving that. And just from day one, in loving the program. Um, I think that's that's another big one as well. So commitment for you as a, a as a student athlete, but also your your love and your kind of aspiration to be part of not just because you want to perform, but because you want to add something to Grey's Inn. Cricket's been doing pretty well. Um, second first team fixture yesterday against Oakwood Park. Uh, we played Judd last week, um, the mighty Judd. Um, we did all right. We managed to put one eight eight on the board and. Skittled him for 60, 69, 68, something like that. Um, sound board up. Oh, God. No. Keep going. We'll get yeah. the sound board. Um, we'll we'll find again. Uh, no performance. <laughs> <laughs> Seamless. Seamless. <laughs> They'll never know. Um, no performances. Rocky, Asan, I think Asan outscored Rocky by one. I think they both, They it was eight, 80, 88 and 87. Both put in amazing knocks. Um, and then bowling backed it up with a year nine, year nine Raj, senior, level, senior level. I know we spoke about it before. My personal Raj coach. and Sian. Five for five seven. For five seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, then, and then the boys managed to, to back it up yesterday, albeit not the most amazing performance. Best, bowl, best bowling performance for the first 15 overs. We were so on it and we were so clinical in terms of that. And they were they were they were they were they were thirty for thirty for for five or six off off of off of fourteen overs, um, which is ridiculous. Um, and then like the 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 age group cricket's going really well. The sevens that have come in looking amazing. Um, 
enjoying it. We've got lots of boys playing there. Yeah, eights looking really good. Mr. Robinson, nines are continuing to love it, and their uh, their chat is definitely improving day by day. And it's amazing. That's an important the part of cricket. I had the, the, we had a net session with the nines the other night, and it was so Electric. much fun. They were so funny. Um, that's doing really well. Um, definitely, a buzz, well. definitely a buzz of cricket. Definitely, yeah, a buzz. definitely yeah. is a Just buzz. need some sunny weather and then we'll yeah. be laughing. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got a game against Nines, we've got a game against Hurstmead tonight, and then we've got our block against uh, Sam Langton on Saturday. Um, we've got uh, Norton Natchball coming up. So lots of exciting stuff. Lots of exciting stuff. Um, shall we move on? Athletes Ball. Shall we move on to the Athletes Ball? We... What a <laughs> night. <laughs> what a night. <laughs> Did Revo's um, uh, vision come true? Uh, well, I saw him outside at one point. He went. I'm glad I saved my number one moment for this. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, oh, Revo, good, good, good lad. Well class. done, well done. So, yeah, I think uh, hats off to Mr. Robinson. Amazing job organising it. Team effort. Team effort. Um, so, Mr. Parrish, his not untying skills have become really good. And also his tying skills <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding tying skills. Um, Mr. Mackey's polishing effort, <laughs> <and> unbelievable! <laughs> all the old yeah. trophies, yeah, absolutely unbelievable. No, just no, it was, just it was, a, it was, it was a, it was a solid three-hour setup, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, TVs, TVs, awesome <laughs> TV <laughs> fiasco, fiasco. <laughs> a few legs, a bit of cardio before I well, got into me a <laughs> into me suit. <laughs> it was it was tight, but it was it was an amazing night. Yeah, lots it? going on behind the scenes. It was really nice to see some old boys back from the yeah. club as well, and and it's just it's the first one, so. We want it to grow. You know? Yeah, and I think. It's only going to get Yeah, better I next spoke year. to some of the parents who were there. You know, they were really, really grateful for invitations. Obviously, most of the parents who were there will, will be back again next year. And um, I know a lot of the, the lot of the boys who, and girls who have said who are leaving this year have said that they'd like an yeah. invite back. And absolutely, they're all invited. Like there's the, the invite. club. You there's know, there's the invite. invite. So I think I think year on year now that it's been such a, a great evening and a great success, it's definitely going to. Grow, it's it's so important for me to to make sure that every sport that we do is yeah, recognised, and, we, and it, everything's on a sort of similar level. We we got some sports here that are more popular mm. Mm. Um, that the boys do, and they, we kind of they're our flagship sports. But there's lots of other sport Great that goes on, around, and yeah. some high level sport um, that's going on one within our, and outside. One of, of our teams of the year is not it was swimming. Mm. Absolutely, we've got yeah. twenty fourth. In the country for uh, the relay medley. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, basketball's thriving, rugby's thriving, cricket's really getting there now. Netball. Yeah, little things like netball. the um, netball. swimming. Yeah, yeah. Netball. Hang on, hang on. The biggest things in our sport. The biggest things like the swimming, you know, is, is great. Netball's growing. Girls' sport is is amazing. It's great to see. You know the, um, the sports, oh, oh, sports personality. Yeah, sports yeah. personality. Um, Jeff Simmons being, being Jess, and that was so Simon. well deserved as well. Simmons. Simon. 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 Don't worry, Jess. I'll get you yeah, that right. right. Yeah. I'll let you close. 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 Right, better go teach. Yeah, better go teach. But should we, should we? One last question for Mr. Tom. Um, Do you have one? No, I don't. <laughs> Does anyone else got one? What's best moment, best moment of uh, the three years that you've been in. Meeting Ooh. us. Tough one. I would say I can't pick a best moment, but I would say seeing when we did win the county cup this this year seeing those original boys like Kofi and Eman lifting that trophy was was a really powerful moment yeah well deserved i have to yeah. also say um Kofi's speech for yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. What incredible. Incredible. God, what oh, someone was cutting onions yeah, yeah. <laughs> incredible speech. yeah, yeah no, it was really good yeah. Yeah, it shows how much you've done for the boys as well and how they, how they appreciate it so. That's great. And, uh, i don't think you'll ever hear of mr Tong again because he'll be in well, practice. Yeah, this is, pre- I can't believe we got him off this morning. Let's just this check is... what's coming up. You've got pre pre season, pre season, <laughs> and then pre post season, <laughs> off season, season, off season. There's a little taper in there. And there's oh, a taper in there. Okay. So we will see you hours. in. <laughs> we'll see you in July. This, this time next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done, guys. Thank Thanks for listening. Boys. Make sure you share and subscribe. Hang on. Oh, hang hang on. on. <laughs> just one more plug.
Here oh we go. God. Oh, <laughs> edit this bit. Seamless. Really? What do you fancy? Oh, what have we got? Guys, stop it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a great day. <laughs>